Let's take a look at a fun and interesting physics experiment you can try at home. Here's what you'll need. A plate with some milk on it. Standard cooking food dye. A Q-tip. And some dish soap. Start by putting a little bit of food dye in the middle of the milk. Just like that. Okay, now let's see what happens if I touch the Q-tip to the food dye. Nothing much. Let's try again with a little bit of dish soap on the Q-tip. Let's see if we can shed light on this phenomenon with some physics principles. Using the concepts of surfactants and surface tension, we can explain the observed flow of the dye from the center to the perimeter of the milk. A liquid, like the milk we just saw, is composed of tiny molecules jiggling about and vibrating. These molecules are not entirely free to move because of intermolecular forces. Some of these forces are due to covalent bonds, which occur when several atoms share an electron. Bonding also occurs due to more complicated electromagnetic interactions between the molecules. If we examine a molecule in the bulk of the liquid in comparison to a molecule at the surface, we note that the molecule in the bulk has more neighbors, in this case about six in comparison to about three and therefore possesses more intermolecular bonds. Each bond contributes a negative quantity of energy. If the molecule at the surface has fewer neighbors, then its energy is more positive than the bulk molecule's energy. The amount by which the energy at the surface exceeds the energy in the bulk is called the surface energy. If we increase the surface area of the liquid by, for example, increasing the diameter of the cup, then we are bringing more molecules from the bulk to the surface, which thereby increases the surface energy. Now let's imagine a water droplet floating in space. The droplet will assume whatever configuration minimizes its energy. In the absence of other forces acting on it, this amounts to minimizing the surface energy. Since the surface area is proportional to the surface energy, the water will configure into a shape that minimizes its surface area. That shape is a sphere. Okay, now that we understand something about surface energy, let's turn our attention to the related idea of surface tension. Let's imagine some liquid suspended between a U-shaped wire and a movable bar. If no force is applied to the bar, the liquid will minimize its surface area by drawing the bar inward. This inward force on the bar is called the surface tension force. When the surface of the liquid is stable and in equilibrium, the surface tension is uniform throughout. Now let's imagine what will happen if the surface tension is not in equilibrium. For example, let's say that the surface tension is much higher in region A of the liquid than region B. This could happen if stirring or some other disturbance deposited more molecules into one region than the other. Remember that the surface tension from a region will pull molecules located at the region's perimeter towards its center. The imbalance of surface tension forces means that molecules at the interface between region A and B are being pulled with greater force towards the center of region A. This force imbalance will cause an observable flow at the surface from low surface tension regions to the high surface tension region. All right, we have almost arrived at an explanation of the original soap and milk demonstration. Let's just talk a little bit more about the soap. The soap behaves as a surfactant. 
Surfactant is a word made up by some scientists because they were tired of repeating the phrase surface acting agent. Surfactants typically have a head that is hydrophilic or water loving and a tail that is hydrophobic, water fearing. If you deposit surfactants in water, it stays at the surface and sticks its tail out so that the hydrophobic part is as far from the water as possible. The presence of these surfactants on the surface reduces the surface tension. Here's how. We can think of the surfactants as a gas confined to the surface of the liquid. We know that if we examine gas in a box, it will exert an outward pressure on the walls of the box. In a similar fashion, the surfactant exerts an outward pressure on the surface of the fluid. This outward pressure, due to the surfactants, will reduce the pre-existing inward surface tension pressure. Now let's apply this framework to the milk and soap experiment. Initially, before we add the soap, the surface is in equilibrium with uniform surface tension. Then we add a droplet of soap. The soap molecules get absorbed at the surface and lower the surface tension in the region they were initially deposited. Now the surface tension is no longer uniform. It is lower in the center, where the surfactant is, and is higher out around the soapless perimeter. As we just explained, the surface tension imbalance will create a macroscopic flow from the lower surface tension center to the higher surface tension perimeter. The dye molecules help us visualize this outward flow. There you have it folks, thanks for watching.